Hello, this is Ben Sullins, and I'm going to walk you through this module on dashboarding in Tableau titled Painting the Whole Picture. I titled it this because I want to emphasize that when we build dashboards, we are in a sense painting and we're using different views from different data sources to give our users a holistic understanding of whatever the analysis is. So whether that's monitoring key performance indicators or focusing in on a specific business process, we're trying to give a well-rounded perspective by bringing in lots of different views from different places. I'm going to start with defining what dashboards are. There's lots of jargon out there and lots of different misuses of this word. So I'd like to just formalize that and then go through some examples. I'll walk you through basic dashboarding in Tableau, some of the tricks and techniques. I'll talk about formatting, which is probably the most time sensitive part of the process. I'll get into actions then and show you how to make your dashboards interactive for your users in a way that really lets them touch and feel their data. Let's start by defining dashboarding. The definition of dashboards is that they are a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives which fit entirely on a single screen so that it can be monitored at a glance. This is from 2004 with Stephen Few's book Dashboard Confusion. He is somewhat of the forefather of dashboarding, if you will. Prior to him and still around is Edward Tufte. Uh, Tufte has a bit of a different perspective. He's much more in the sense of books and art and other forms of information displays. Uh, Stephen Few is kind of seen as the thought leader or you know the, the forefather of building dashboards and information displays. So a lot of what you see here is a lot of what he teaches in all of his books. Let's take a look at some examples now. Here is a dashboard from Cognos, and these are recent copies of their training manuals that I pulled, and I was able to pull some images out of there. And just thinking about the definition here, visual display. Well, there's lots of visual elements here. Now, there's one interesting element, and that's text. When text is displayed, what actually happens inside of your brain is you read it and speak it back to yourself. So rather than it be visual input, it's actually auditory input. So that's how things like position on page and color can communicate more information faster than actual text itself. Looking around this dashboard, it fits onto a single screen. It has lots of visual elements. It is a little bit tough to be monitored at a glance. I would say in the top left, this regional performance section does that well. The rest of it you really have to hone in on. Uh, too many axes and labels and things make it a bit difficult to really drill down. But overall, I wouldn't say this is, this is horrible. I would say there's definitely room for improvement though. Here's a MicroStrategy dashboard. The only thing I really wanna point out here is the big radial display in the top left. If you think about it, all that's actually showing you is a single number. And that is a huge waste of space, in my opinion. We're taking about 25% of the entire dashboard up just for a single number. And it's still hard to see. In fact, you can't even tell what exactly that number is. So in my opinion, they should redo this dashboard, get rid of that radial display. And if all you want to do is focus on that one number, just display it as text in big, bold lettering. Also, if you look down on some of these other ones, the category analysis just below that, the details there are so difficult to read because they're so small, and the grid lines and the gradient of the background really seem to distort the view or make it harder to consume the information. I would say there's lots of room for improvement on this. Admittedly, this one is a bit older. Uh, it's the only one I could find from PeopleSoft. The thing to point out here, there's a couple gotchas in the dashboarding world. The top right, you have these 3D translucent bars. Well, the, the translucency is a decorative effect, and I would contend that we should always focus on using any aspect of the display to convey more meaning and more data uh, versus any kind of decoration or any you know wannabe of visual appeal. Uh, the idea is to convey information fast and efficient as possible through a visual style. And these decorative techniques really just deter from that. Here we have a business objects dashboard. Some interesting stuff here. Uh, again, with the radial displays taking up way too much room. And if you notice, uh, the scale is actually flipped on a couple of them. So good is to the right on some and 
bad is to the right on others, uh, making it more confusing with our eyeballs having to jump around and try to dissect in a very detailed fashion all the little nuances of whether or not uh, what we're looking at is positive or negative. Down on the bottom right, you have some interesting charts. These are similar to Pareto charts, which have uh, an actual number and then a running total up above it. Um, not, not a horrible choice, but a bit small and a bit hard to read. Uh, maybe better labeling and uh, better axes could be improved here. Let's take a look at now Click View. Click View is an interesting one. It's a bit more modern. Right off the bat, the thing I notice out of here is that it doesn't fit entirely onto a screen. There's lots of selectors and options to choose and change stuff. And that's good for data exploration. But in dashboarding, we actually want people to be able to just pull up our view and instantly have the information displayed for them. It's not something that we want people to have to go around and filter 10 times before they get the answer they're looking for. There is a place for that and it's definitely valuable and you've already learned how to do all that in the previous modules with displaying views and quick filters and everything. Uh, but with a dashboard, we really want to make something that just from the very first glance really hits the target with all the answers that the customer is looking for. And again here with the radial display, it's confusing with the gradient and the bevel on the edge. I'm not sure if that's trying to convey anything or if that is just another decorative effect. And uh, in fact, on the right, you could actually take the pie chart out completely and get more information simply by looking at the legend of the pie chart. Uh, so that's probably the first thing I would do if I were looking at this. And here's one uh, from Tableau. This is uh, from a friend of mine, Ben Jones, uh, over at Data Remixed. Uh, he built something here. Notice there's no filter options. Uh, there's a bit of text on the top that explains what's going on. And there's several different views, uh, all of which uh, have very carefully placed axes. And everything is very precisely labeled. So that way, when you look at it, you can get a sense of exactly what that's trying to tell you. When you look at the map, Instantly, your eyes shift to the left and see this huge uh, bubble map on top of the west coast. And then to the right of that, obviously, there's this huge spike in this line trend. So easily digestible bits of information here. Now, here's one from Stephen Few himself from a book, The Information Dashboard Design, version 1. Uh, he just came out with his second edition of that, and I highly recommend both of them. The idea that he was trying to convey here is that you can fit a ton of information onto a single dashboard and using color sparingly, draw your audience's eyes to where they need to pay attention. So if you recall, it's a visual display, the most important information monitored at a glance. That's in fact the title of the new book. And with that, as you can see in the top there, he has the KPIs, what's going on right now. The data warehouse has a big red dot over it. If I scroll down from there, I see that same red dot over data warehouse. And I can see to the left, a trend of the last 12 months of system availability. And to the right, I can see what's going on in terms of a bullet graph there. And so very easily digestible information here, although there is a ton of information. Lots and lots of data, lots and lots of different views, all packed into a single page dashboard like this, uh, which will then spawn uh, the call to action for a lot of folks. And that's when those more exploratory views or the phone usually gets picked up. Now let's take a look and start building some actual dashboards in Tableau. Okay, let's start off with some basic dashboarding. I'm going to switch over to Tableau, and in Tableau, I'm going to say connect to data, and then I'm going to go to my Superstore Extract. Okay, so from here, I'm going to start off by building several basic views, and then I'll pull them all together into a dashboard. Maybe when I start, I'll do something like category with sales by colored by profit, sorted. I'll go ahead and change my color scheme. All right, that's my category sales. Now I'll add a trend, order date, sales on the row shelf, expand this down to month. Maybe I'll add a forecast in here. Now I'm going to do a map 
And for this, why don't I take my country, I'll double click on this guy, then I'll add profit to the color. I'll change my color scheme here. Hit apply. So I've got a map, I've got a trend, and I've got my categories. Let's add one more just for symmetry. And this is gonna be a customer segment analysis. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start off with clicking on customer segment. Holding control and clicking on sales. Going over to show me, asking it for a tree map. And now I can see a tree map of sales by customer segment. And inside of this, if I'd like, I can do something like break down the actual category, drag this over to my label. And I'm actually gonna color by customer segment. So I can see all the different segments here and I can see how they're broken down. It's in a hierarchical view. And I'm also gonna add sales to the label. I'm gonna do this by holding control and clicking and dragging sales up to the label shelf. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and format this. Give me a currency in thousands. Just a single decimal is fine. It's a bit more readable that way. Okay, so I've got something here. I've got a tree map. I've got my category sales, my trend, my geographic map, and my tree map. Now to create a dashboard, there's a couple different ways to do it. The one I like is this little tab at the bottom on the far right that has four squares in it. I can just click that and it gives me a new dashboard. I could have also clicked on the dashboard menu here and said new dashboard, but this is the easiest way I find. So I'm gonna call this my sales dashboard. When we want to add all these different views to our dashboard, there's a couple different options we have. Notice in the top left, we have our list. Then down in the middle, we have some options here for tiled or floating views. In version eight of Tableau, they released a floating option where objects on the dashboard can float and you can place them on top of each other. Sometimes this is helpful if you have a very specific data set. Imagine a running total of something which only gets bigger. It would be advantageous to be able to put something like a legend in the top left where you know data won't ever show up. So for now, we're just gonna start off with a tiled view. And I'm just gonna simply drag these guys on. And when I drag them on, you'll see a gray box pop up as I drag my cursor around. And that's telling me where this dashboard is gonna land when I drag it on. So for the trend, let's say it's up here. Now for the map, I'm gonna go ahead and add this next to the trend. And then for the tree map, I'm gonna add it down below just right next to my category sales. You'll notice that the resolution here isn't ideal. In fact, I have to scroll. So that's not meeting our requirements of fitting on a single screen. And that gets to the next topic here on the bottom left, which is about sizing your dashboard. So it comes with several basic sizes built in that you can just pick. You have some interesting ones here, iPad portrait or iPad landscape, these kind of things that you can just click on. Make sure that it's formatted appropriately for your audience. Uh, laptop is the one I choose here. It's kind of the smallest one. And you can also do something that is automatic where it'll just adjust to the size of your display. So if I were to shrink this up, you'll see it'll adjust. And if I expand it back out, it'll readjust. You can also do an exact match. Let's say you have an exact pixel size that you want. A good idea there would be to find out what the common resolution is of your audience and choose that exact size or choose something that'll fit on that exact size. You can also do a range. Now a range does this automatic sizing, just like you saw there, uh, in between these two pixel ratios. I'm a fan of choosing some exact sizes here and making sure everything fits within that. Uh, it actually helps the dashboard load faster because a uh, tableau doesn't have to regenerate new images as the window changes. So we'll just stick with the laptop size for now. And you can see what it did here. So it added all four views in a tiled manner. 
and it added all my legends on the right. I have some highlight features here, so I can do something on like customer segment. Notice this little highlighter that pops up right in the corner there. When that's checked, I can do something like this where I click and it'll actually highlight the viz for me. So another way to allow interactive features with your users. Up in the top right, we have our color legend, which is set for our map. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that for now. And I'm gonna get rid of this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and drag my customer segment down just right next to the tree map. That way it just sits with inside that one. It doesn't take up space for the top two views. And here you have a basic dashboard. So we haven't talked about actions or anything yet, but just know that one thing that Tableau is great at is the ability to allow each one of these dashboards to talk to each other in a way using actions. So for right now, we've basically covered a basic dashboard. You double click or you drag on items of views that you've already created onto a design surface. You size that surface and then you can add other items if you'd want. So here's some other items right in the middle here. I can do things like choose layout containers. These layout containers allow me to add different objects next to each other. If they weren't lining up properly, I could put several of them within one little square you see here. I could add a custom image. I can embed another web page. This little blank object is good if you don't have uh, your all your views put together yet and you just want something to hold a place for what will be put in there. That's a good use of that. And text is a good one for like something like a title here. So if I drag this guy up, I can call this my sales dashboard. Maybe give this a good font. And inside of my text here, I could actually add a uh, parameters or some of the workbook, some of the global object names. When it does that, it makes this huge giant text box. I'm gonna shrink that back up. Inside of each view, I can do things like adjust the size. So right now it's saying fit entire view. I could change that to normal, which is about the same thing. Down here is one where I notice there's a scroll bar. I could say fit entire view. It might scrunch it up so tiny you can't really tell. So you need to be careful with those, but that's one way to control the display. Same with this guy over here. This one would make sense to say fit entire view so it maximizes that full space. And this is the first type of dashboard I wanna show you how to build. So I'm gonna leave this here and now let's go a bit deeper into some additional dashboarding techniques. For this next exercise in dashboarding, what I'm gonna do is use a data set that I enhanced um, from the coffee chain sample data set, which comes with Tableau. I've added several calculations here, uh, fields that I'll use for headers, some calculations, as well as some interesting ones that allow me to control the display inside of my view. I'm gonna do a bit of the Food Network thing now. I'll show you the dashboard that I want in the end. And this is also important when you're thinking about building something, what types of displays and what is the end picture gonna look like for your reader? And then that will allow you to reverse engineer or build all the individual components thereof. So let's take a look at what I've already done, which is the finished product here. Both of these are in the demo files of this module. And here's the finished product. We have a map, we have this breakdown by product with the color by profit ratio. And then down on the bottom, you have a sparkline view with some year over year percent change, a variance from plan, lots of different details here. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I got to this point and I was able to build all these different little views and smash them together inside of this dashboard, giving it a really high data to pixel ratio, uh, conveying a lot of information in a very small space. So let's jump back over here. I'm gonna start by building my map. This we know how to do. I'm gonna double click on state. I'm gonna drag profit onto color. I'm gonna add a date filter here, which makes it relevant just to this year by choosing relative dates and then year to date. Hit okay. I'm also gonna label by profit and I'm gonna format this as currency with only one decimal in thousands. 
There you go. Compacts it quite nicely. Because remember, we have to think about when we're building something for a display, it all needs to fit into a single screen. And if that's an iPad or uh, some other kind of tablet or an um, iPhone or any other kind of Android phone or anything like that, we need to be conscious of where our people are going to watch this. And so when they do, uh, we're using the correct uh, resolution. And so space is uh, at a, a premium here. So anytime you can shave off space but still convey information, uh, it's critically important to, to make sure you do that. All right, the next one was our product breakdown. I'm going to drag product over to rows, sales up to columns. I'm going to sort this and descending by sales. I'm going to drag that date filter on, but I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go over to my original one and say apply to worksheets. And for now, I'm going to say selected worksheets and products. Hit OK. That changes my data here quite a bit. So on my products view here, I'm actually going to color by profit ratio. I'm going to change this scale here, and I'm going to change the colors to be more colorblind friendly. The start here is going to be zero. So if you have a 0% profit ratio, you're not doing so hot. I'm going to make a stepped color, hit apply, and I get something like this. And when we use color, we have to be aware that color draws attention. And so we want to use it in ways that we are intending for our audience attention to be drawn. So here I have this brown, which is just really popping out because it's so different than all the other colors, which is good because this is the one that really you should be focused on. Whereas some of these other ones in the gray and the blue, yeah, they're good. And there's still color differentiation. So you can tell the difference between them. Uh, but something like this is a good way to draw your reader's attention to it. So we've got our products. Let's jump back to our finished product here and take a look at the bottom. So we've got the top two. Now in the bottom, what you see are actually several different views. I have this one here, which shows me a list of products. And then it also shows me the current or the most recent week's sales numbers. Then I have a year to date on sales trend across it by month. Then I have a year over year percent change. And then I have a variance from plan. So all of these are independent views and I need to go build them one by one before I can add them to my dashboard. So let's just go left to right here. Let's start with this one, which shows the most recent sales by week for products. I'm gonna switch back to my starter view. And it's pretty similar to this one, except here I'm actually just gonna start a new sheet and I'm gonna call this one current sales. I'm going to drag product over now, and I'm going to, in this case, show date on my columns. I'm going to go down to week number, which gives me this view. I'm going to change this to discrete. Now I'm going to drag sales on. So I'm looking at sales here across weeks. Now is when I use this is most recent field. If I take a look at this calculation, what it's going to do, it's actually going to take a look at the date and say, is the date for the current column I'm in the same as the max date for the entire window? And if so, it's going to be true. And then I can actually use that as a filter. So let me drag this on up to my columns here. And you can see here it added false, 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 false. If I scroll to the right, I have true at the very end. So what that's saying is that the date for this column, is that the highest date in the entire view? In this case, yes it is. So I'm actually gonna click on this and say filter. I'm gonna uncheck false, hit okay. Now I just have that most recent date. There are a couple other ways to do this. Uh, one is, involves the rank function. I'm not gonna show you that now, but just keep in mind that if this doesn't always work out for you, there are more ways than one to skin the cat here. Now I have all this garbage and I don't wanna see any of that. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm just gonna right click on this, say, okay, hide field label for columns. And here I'm gonna uncheck show header. And now I've got my viz. I've got just the most recent sales by product. Now let's go back. So the next one we wanna do is a year to date sparkline trend. And sparklines are a great way to show trends in a very small space, even though they're across a large period of time. 
And they're interesting in that they don't share the same axes. So one of them could be in millions, the other one could be in thousands, and they still show enough differentiation to be able to see an actual trend uh, without trying to compare the different, in this case, products. And I'll show you what that means in a second here. So I'm going to now create a new one. I'm gonna call this year to date trend. I'm gonna start with product. I'm going to drag date onto columns. And if you recall, it's by month. So I'm actually gonna change this to a month view. I'm gonna drag sales onto my rows. This gives me my lines. And now just to compact this, I'm gonna on top here say entire view. That makes sure that everything is displayed. And this is what I was talking about. If we left the axes the same for all of these, it's not a real fair comparison because some are in the hundreds, some are in the thousands, and your data can be widely different. And in a sparkline, the idea is to see the trend. It's not to see the actual amount. Notice we don't have any labels or anything on the other view. So in order to show that, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this, say edit axis, I'm gonna uncheck include zero, which is a rare thing. Uh, I often recommend always showing zero so that way your size of the objects on the page isn't skewed. But in this case, we don't care about that because we're not showing the actual scale. Then we're gonna say independent axis for each row or column. So that means when I click on this, now you can see every single one of these got their own axes. See the numbers are quite different. And you can see an actual trend amongst them now. Now the next thing to do is to uncheck show header and we've got sparklines. Now I'm gonna go through formatting once I actually put it on the dashboard, but a lot of these lines in here are just extra noise. We're gonna get rid of those. One thing that I will do before I do that though is I'm gonna size this by shrinking this down quite a bit, almost to the thinnest it can be. That way when we smash it down into the view, it actually is still legible. And this is where I add in my trend header. So I'm gonna drag this guy up and you can see now I have year to date by month. I'm gonna right click on this and say hide the field labels. If you caught that it's showing 2012 as well, well, good on you. I'm gonna go back to my date filter and apply it to my new worksheets. I'm actually not gonna apply it to current sales because that one's already being filtered. And now if I go back, there you go, you can see that it's different. All right, so we've got two out of the four here on the bottom. The next one is the year over year percent change. For this, I'm actually just gonna create a new one, year over year percent change. I'm gonna drag product on. I'm gonna drag date up to columns. And this is an interesting one where I'm gonna use a table calculation. So let me introduce that. Here we have sales. I'm actually gonna drag this back to label, so I just have it here. Now with sales, what I can do is I can turn this into a table calculation, which is year over year growth. And I'm not gonna do that quite yet because I need to drill down one more layer, but the only reason this is doable is because I have year on my viz. If I didn't have year here, I'd have to do a much more complex calculation in order to get year over year numbers. So here I'm actually gonna drill down to quarter, and then I get month, now I don't care about quarters, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Now you can see I have all my data left to right from 2012 to 2013. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to a year over year growth. And 2012 disappears because there's no previous year to compare it to. And then in 2013, what you see is I get a bunch of different little percentages. And you can see it looks like in the beginning of the year we were up and then as we go through the year we're actually down over last year. So what do I do? Now if I filter out 2012, if I actually right click on this guy and say exclude, then now I don't have 2012 to compare to so I don't, I don't have any data at all. So instead of filtering it out, what you need to do is actually hide it. So I'm gonna right click on 2012 and say hide. So the data is still technically in my view, it's just not being displayed. And that is a neat trick for showing and hiding different elements on the page. If you can create a calculation which identifies a specific row or column that you're interested in, then you can use that to show and hide things. You can then even have a parameter that you could change to show or hide those details. So 
that's a neat trick and one to really keep in mind is how to hide versus filter and when that's appropriate. Now we're almost there yet. Now what we need to do is filter just to the most recent month. So guess what? I can take my calculation is most recent. I'm going to drag that on. Same idea. Now it compares at whatever level I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at week or if I'm looking at year, whatever, it's going to pick the most recent one for me. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and filter these out. I'm just going to right click on this and say exclude. And you can see what it did is it added a filter for me where it excluded false. And I'm going to format this. Percentage, just give me two. There you go. Alrighty, now let's hide some of these. Hide field label, uncheck show header, show header, show header. Now I'm gonna drag in my header for year over year percent change. There it is. And I'm gonna leave that like that for now, and then I'll format it more once I drag it onto the dashboard. Actually take that back, I'm gonna format one thing, I'm gonna center the text here. I don't think I can do that once it's on the dashboard, so I'll do that now. Okay, next up is my variance from plan. Now this is an interesting one. Basically in the middle you have zero. To the left you're below plan, to the right you're above plan. And I'm gonna go show you how, now this is key because you have to have your actual plan numbers in order to do this. So this won't work for everything. A lot of times I may put a KPI or something like that um, way far on the left, which draws readers' attention. And here the idea is that you see these red ones pop up and they draw your attention directly to them. So let's go build this guy. I'm gonna start a new tab and call it variance from plan. I have product on my rows, just like always. I'm gonna take my variance from budget sales. And if you take a look at this, I have the percent to budget sales minus one, which gives me the plus or minus from 100% of your sales, which would give you a negative or a positive. You know, if it was, if you were 70%, you'd be negative 30. If you were 120%, you'd be 20. So I'm gonna drag this onto columns. It's gonna give me my view there. And one thing I did is I did format this so that it was had a fixed axis that was even, so that way things weren't skewed one way or the other. I, there's probably a better way to do this, but for my purposes now, this seemed to work well. I'm then going to take this and hold control and drag this on top of color. And then I'm also going to do that again, and this time on top of a label. And with this, I'm also gonna change the format I right click on this and choose format. I'm gonna do a custom one here. You can see what happens when I go there originally. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna show a plus for anything above and put 0.0%. And you can see the ones on the right have that and now the ones on the left also have it. So in order to show the difference between a negative and a positive, I use a semicolon and now I show a negative 0.0%. .0 there you go. So that's how you can show a plus for the positive and then a minus for the negative. Not always what you want to do, but in this case, I wanted to make sure that when you saw it, you, you didn't think, oh, it's 30% of plan. It's plus 30% of plan, meaning it's above. I'm going to go ahead and change my color scheme again. Orange to blue like the other ones. I'm actually going to leave it as red to green, but I'm going to choose instead of a green, a dark gray. And then I'm gonna set my center at zero, so anything below that is red, and anything above it is some sort of gray. And you may notice that I'm missing the date filter here. That's okay, I'm gonna go add that in a second. Let's just check one last time. All right, so we've got everything we need for this bottom part of the display. Let me just make sure that my date filter is being applied everywhere it needs to be. We don't need to do it on year over year change because that would mess up the data that's being displayed. Current sales is already being filtered, so I'm just gonna add it to the variance from plan. All right, so let's build our dashboard now. I'm gonna click on my new dashboard tab down here. I'm gonna call this sales dashboard. I'm gonna first start with the map, which is my top left quadrant. I'm gonna drag products to the right of that. 
before I go further, I'm going to go ahead and format this. I'm going to choose iPad landscape. And in this resolution that we record in, it doesn't work that well. So I'm actually going to change this to 800. So it's almost a laptop size, but it takes the, uh, the full advantage of the height of a iPad. All right. So now I'm going to drag current sales down below all these guys. And to the right of that is my trend. To the right of that is my year over year change. And to the far right is the variance from plan. So I just keep adding these guys. Now it looks like a bunch of garbage right now. And this is where we get into formatting, which is, as I mentioned before, where you spend probably the most amount of time. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to start top left and just go down and format these guys as I go through. I'm going to hide the title on this one. I'm going to right click and choose format. I feel that the borders don't serve a purpose here, so I'm going to get rid of them completely. Gives me a, a couple more pixels. You can see that there. Now on the products, same idea. Hide the title. This one I'm going to say fit to entire view. I know it fits. It doesn't always work, but on a dashboard, you really don't want people to have to scroll or anything like that. So it's good if you can uh, make everything fit into a single page. Here I am going to leave the axes, but I am going to format this. So instead of this numbers, I'm going to show currency and I'm going to show it in thousands and I'm going to say zero decimals. So this way it's just a bit cleaner. And I'm going to go ahead and format this, get rid of the column divider. Don't need that. nor do I need the row divider. As clean as you can possibly make things, the easier people are going to be able to digest them visually. This little pane over here on the right is where it put all my color legends. Uh, some of these are pretty obvious, uh, some not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these and make them floating. So that way I can embed them into my view. Make this guy floating. So now I get a bit more real estate as you see there. I'm just going to put them around here for now. I still have more to do up top, so I'm not going to say that's quite done yet. Now, current sales, all of these need to fit the entire view. That way that they all line up visually. If you notice, the list of products here is in every one, but we're going to actually hide all of them except for the very first one. And then we're going to use some interactive stuff to be able to uh, make sure they all fit together. So I'm actually going to go back here, and for this I'm going to say center align go back in you can see that there so I can scrunch this down a little bit more I'm gonna hide this title I'm gonna right click on this go to format here I'm gonna get rid of the column divider don't need that in fact I don't want that because then it would make things look disjointed between one graph to the next. I'm going to get rid of the row banding. So to click up here on the little paintbrush, get rid of the row banding, as well as the banding in the header. Okay, it's clean as can be right now. Now with this guy, I'm going to hide the title. I'm going to get rid of this axis down at the bottom. Remember all those little lines in there? I'm going to go ahead and format this. And inside of here, I'm just going to get rid of all this junk. So I'm going to keep the actual row divider, but I'm going to slice it down just one to the level so it only shows the top and the bottom. You can see now I've got that. And the grid lines are what's making it so noisy. So I'm just going to get rid of those. There you go. And I'm also going to get rid of the zero line, which doesn't show up, but it's one that does pop up once in a while when you're least expecting it. And now I can go ahead and hide this so I get a more full view on the trend here you can see that's looking good now I'm gonna drag this over just a hair I'm gonna get rid of this title and this is uh, pretty straightforward here I'm just gonna hide well first I'm gonna make this fit the entire view so it's all lined up I'm gonna format this guy get rid of the row banding don't really care about the header, but I'll do it just for good measure. Get rid of the column divider. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to right click this and uncheck show header. 
I'm going to scrunch this guy over. Don't need too much space for that. Okay, we're getting there. And I've got my variants from plan now, so I'm going to hide the header here. Hide the title. Get rid of this guy. Get rid of the column dividers. And go ahead and hide the product label there. Ah, I forgot to put a header on this one. So let me go back to the sheet. I'm going to drag the header variants up top. Hide the field label, which tells me what field I'm looking at. And just give me that nice piece of text that I wanted. And now if you notice what that did is it made the tops of them all line up. Sometimes if you don't have anything there, what will actually happen is it'll uh, shoot one of the axes up above when it, it's not lined up with the other graphs there, and then that causes a whole mass of confusion. So make sure to ch set this to entire view. And there we go. So now we have a really dense dashboard, lots and lots of information all packed together here by combining many different views into a very small space. And we use visual alignment of the different elements in order to let our eyes track across them and be able to see what's going on. I'm gonna add a title here to the top. Sales dashboard, year to date, 2013. Go ahead and make this the new default font, make it about 16. Give it somewhat of a gray there. There we go. And see that little floating guy popped up. So I'm gonna shrink this all the way down as much as I can. I'm gonna drag this guy over here because I know the states we sell to aren't ever up there. And there you go. So now I have a really dense, highly valuable, highly data to pixel ratio dashboard. And it's time to make it a bit more interactive. So just displaying it isn't enough, and we actually haven't finished formatting. But I'm gonna take a second here just to look around and see what we can do visually to help users consume this data a bit more cleanly. So now let's add some filters and actions to our dashboard. This is a really cool part where we allow our users to kind of interact with the data directly. Instead of having a bunch of little filters floating around, you get you basically touch and feel the actual data and allow it to become your interface. So the easiest way to do that, and the simplest example, is when I hover over my map here, first off, what I'm gonna do is actually get rid of those zoom controls because I'm showing it in such a small space. I don't want people to have to zoom in just to see these states. And I'm going to click on the drop down and say use as a filter. Now, by default, that creates some actions for us that filter everything else in the view based on this one little chart. So, when I click on this, what's going to happen is it actually filtered all of the other displays based on my selection. Now, notice down here this little guy dropped down, and this is why I test. I'm going to drag that back up so that they all line up now. And so as you can see, I can click and say, okay, that was California. What if I really care about the entire West Coast? I'm going to drag, select, and now I'm looking at an aggregation across all the states that I just selected. And I can see how things change. So I'm using the interface itself as my filter versus trying to put a bunch of little drop-down menus everywhere and clutter up the page. That's something that Tableau offers that I think is real special. Now I can do it also with this guy. So now if I want to say, man, Colombian is killing it. Let's see where it's going on. Okay, well, down down on below, you can see what's going on there. And you can see, uh, more importantly, on the map that it, where it's being sold. So let's dive in here now. Let's say I didn't want on the bottom for it to actually filter. I just wanted it to highlight where it is. Well, what I can do is I can go edit what I just did there. So I mentioned before these are actions. And if I go up to Dashboard and Actions, I can see what Tableau did here. It actually created two actions for me. The first one is the one on the map. The next one is the one from the products view. So I'm actually gonna click edit here. And this is how I could also manually create them. When I create an action, I have my source sheets on the left. And I can choose multiples. I can say when to run the action when on hover, which can be very dangerous, on select or on menu. Menu is a good one for something like clicking out to another web page or something like a URL action. 
I can then down on the bottom say, which sheets should I affect with this? And you notice that when I clicked on it, it didn't make sense to filter the ones on the bottom. So I'm actually gonna uncheck everything except for the map. And by all fields, it's gonna pass anything that's in my view there. I'm a bit more pick picky about it. I'm actually gonna say only pass the product. That way I'm not filtering on anything else that may be in the view that I wasn't thinking about, like one of those filters for is latest or any of that. And when I clear the selection, meaning when I click on it again, or if I click off, it will show all values. I could say leave the filter or exclude all values, which is an interesting behavior, but uh, by default it says show all values. Click okay there, click okay. Now let's try this again. If I look at green tea, ooh, what's going on with green tea? It only filters the map. And you can see that in Nevada is clearly where the biggest negative profit is coming from. Now there's another action type which is really useful called highlights. And I'm gonna go to manually create one now by going to dashboard, actions, and then clicking add action, highlight. And from here what I can do is similar to the filter one is I can say which, what are my sources, when does it happen, and what does it affect. And I'm gonna leave it as select, I'm going to allow anything to highlight anything else except for I don't want the map to be highlighted. And the field I want to highlight is going to be on product. And when I click on the map, it shouldn't do anything. So there you go. So now if I click on any one of the displays on the bottom, the spark line, the current sales, or any of those, it will highlight all the other ones as well as the top right product breakdown. So let me click OK on that. So now if I go down here to chamomile and I click on chamomile, you can see what it did. It highlighted from left to right, which and grayed out everything else, which makes it very easy for my eye to visually track across the page, as well as it highlighted it up in the top right, which is an overall product breakdown. So that's an interesting way. Now, if I did the same as before, if I clicked on green tea, look what happens now. Ah, now I filter on the left and I highlight down below. So I can see where green tea is in the list below and I can see the details. Here's the trend, here's where they are to plan, etc. And on the left, it actually filtered it so I can see the details of where the sales are coming from or in this case, uh, where the negative profit's coming from. Now the last thing to talk about here is formatting. When I hover over this, notice all these little tool tips pop up and they, have a lot of information in them by default and I don't always want that to be exactly displayed so if I click on one of them and I click on worksheet and tooltip I can change what the tooltip is so in this case I'm gonna make it pretty simple I don't really care what this is most recent flag I'm gonna leave it as week and product sales good to go the command buttons are these buttons on the bottom when I hover over it, I can say keep only or exclude. I could hide those. I can also say group, create a set, or view data. View data is really useful, especially from the web. People love to be able to drill down and see all the data that went into it. So you can see all the information that led up to that one data point that you were just looking at. You can even then export that, copy it, etc. For this one, let's take a look at this. See header trend. We don't need that in the display. So let's click on this guy. Go to worksheet, tooltip. Let's just get rid of that. Instead of month of date, let's just get rid of that and say month. Hit OK. Take a look now. Much cleaner, much better. Let's do this one. So now we've got worksheet, tooltip, say month. And all the other ones, products was first. So I'll start with product, go to month. Don't need the header for year over year percent change. Don't even need to show the year would be good to show the percent difference in sales. In fact, I could even go add more to this and show the budgeted sales and the actual sales to show you the difference. So you see the actual numbers there. Um, to do that, I just simply add it to the detail or the tooltip inside of the view itself. And a variance to plan, probably similar. I probably have one here that I don't need to show. Yeah, that header. Click on worksheet, tooltip. I'll just get rid of that. There we go. There you go. Now, what about these guys? Yeah, those are fair. Those are fair. All right. 
What we've done in this latest example is we've built a much more complex dashboard that has high levels of data to pixels ratios, high levels of interactive features with filtering and highlighting, and as well as using just visual alignment on the bottom here to show a really compact view with lots of details, but still utilizing as much of the visual properties that we can to help communicate the information more effectively. The beauty of this, it all fits on an iPad. In this module, we learned what a dashboard is. We talked about the definition, a visual display, something that fits entirely on a single screen and only conveys the most important information necessary. We've looked at basic dashboarding techniques of simply adding views to a dashboard which combines them. We talked about formatting that, especially in the last example where we combined many different views into a very small space and utilized every pixel we could to convey information. And then how to make them interactive using actions. This is a really unique feature in Tableau that is incredibly valuable when trying to make our users adopt something like a new dashboard or some new BI tool. Now we'll get into sharing our work and publishing stuff using all the different options in Tableau.